first of all, I would like to give a kind of warm collective round of applause to all our speakers, both yesterday and today, um, for their great effort. Thank you. No, it make, makes a huge difference. So, as I say, here are some things that I've taken out. Um, I hope it's helpful. I'm sure you will all go away with your own sort of important messages, things to take back to your colleagues, your organisations. But it might also just be things that have sparked for you. So, first of all, we are in Asia. And it seems to me that Asia is something of an innovation catalyst. I think uh, it's an amazing region. You know, here we are in, in Singapore, almost that sort of epicenter. Somebody said earlier, it's home to 60% of millennials, this generation that, that sort of we constantly see sort of changing the way things are done. It's got the richest, it's got the poorest, side by side often. It's growing fast. Now, if you kind of have that all around you, you can't help but be innovative, as these consumer needs are so diverse, and as we've heard, there's a willingness to experiment. So what a great place to be as innovators. Um, what a great spur to innovation. So that being given, some of the other things we've heard now about this idea of reimagining. And I think, uh, again, we heard BMW, you know, no longer about cars, more about um, sort of solutions to, to get you where you, you need to be, whatever that looks like. Um, we heard about Netflix. Ben talked about Netflix. You know, actually, it was about the perfect night in or, or city, no longer a bank. <coughs> so, you know, how actually can you stop thinking of yourselves as an industry, a category? That's not how consumers think. But more about sort of how you can deliver an experience that's on a par, if not better, than some of these sort of far broader competitors and how can you help your consumers achieve that sort of bigger job to be done, to go back to that sort of thing? How can you help your consumers ultimately achieve the goals that they want to, to achieve? So I thought it was interesting. We talked quite a lot today about problem focus. And you know, we always hear, don't give me problems, bring me solutions. I wonder if actually the danger is that we've been so solution focused and many organizations find it much easier to jump into the world of solutions. Actually, maybe we should spend a little bit more time thinking about the problems. Stop creating things that people don't need, as one of our, our startup uh, founders said. It's human-centric thinking. Put the consumer, put the human at the heart of the problem. And that problem definition is so essential to something I'll come on to later, but that, that kind of design of prototypes, breaking that problem down into its individual kind of component parts. So yeah, maybe we should focus more on questioning, on figuring out the problem. When we've talked about innovation, um, I love this, this Dilbert cartoon. Um, I'll give you a moment to read it, but you know, I think what we've heard is culture beats strategy. This is, I suspect, the danger. You know, I want you all to be entrepreneurs, you know. And then you gradually say, well, well, you know, not risks, not, not hugely expensive, you know. No, we're not going to reward you. you. You whittle that all down. And actually, basically, at the end of the day, everyone's just an employee again. So how can we start to get those diverse teams, those curious teams, empowering people to act, willing, maybe not getting up there and, as Eric says, sort of like, yeah, I'm going to fail today, but actually willing to take failure as a sort of learning opportunity, um, not seeing that as a sort of end of the process, but only the beginning. How do you go about creating the right environment? How do you sort of hire the right people? How do you set the right leadership agenda? These are big questions. I've luckily only got a short time, so I can't answer them. Um, but, you know, think about how you define that culture. The other thing that I've been struck by and we've talked about sort of uh, through yesterday as well is this power and partnership. The big and the small, the startups and the big corporates, you know, it's no longer them versus us. It's actually how can we do great things together. Again, we heard from IKEA about social enterprise. It doesn't have to be startups. How can you guys do things together to the benefit of both of you? How can you get to that win-win? Um, and again, I, I can't sorry, remember right now who said, but this idea of creativity can only come when you stop looking at your own periphery of skills 
and start reaching out to bring in new ideas and new thought. I think it was Gaurav, actually. He's looking at me, sort of pointing. And by the way, Eric Clapton is outside waiting to come in as a special <laughs> surprise. But, you know, again, I think we get our neural pathways. We find our ways of thinking. There's benefits to partnership that is bringing in fresh perspectives, disruptive ways of thinking that can have much greater, I think, impact than just that sort of value of the, what that startup or what that social entrepreneur group or whoever it is brings alone. You know, I think that there is a danger. We go through the stage gate process. Um, you know, we, we spend a lot of money stroking our chins like the CEO of the hotel company. <coughs> Actually, just find ways to move, get out there, engage your employees. You know, the Adobe kickbox type methodology, the startup, the ideas um, to reality. Anything you can do to engender speed of action, you know, move fast prototype, demo, learn. The customer is king. You know, if you put this in your hands of the customer and it works or it doesn't work, you're going to learn. Um, and, uh, you know, there's, there's sort of lots about the MVP type approach, uh, the cheapest and quickest experiment. I'm going to remind you, the cheapest, cheapest and quickest experiment to learn about the product, not the minimum viable date, um, which I've been known to take. I, th I think I knew where I was going wrong now. Um, I love the helium balloon for gravity from Shalika. You know, you, you can imagine sort of it's the old story of America spending, um, you know, however many millions on the space pen and the Russians using a pencil. Um, you know, how can we, how can we do these things in, in smart, effective, fast ways? Because the danger is not acting, okay? You know, it's not about how much you spend, whatever. Is it worth it? The danger is that you become obsolete. The danger is that in this world of disruption, there is somebody out there who is looking at you and seeing a big bullseye on your company. Um, so yes, and finally, I think, you know, we talked a little bit, somebody talked about the, the pizza or the two pizza rule um, before. Team Indus, Jalika again, talked about small is beautiful. Um, if you remember that Apple ad, the sort of here's to the rebels, Here's the crazy ones. The people in this room, you know, it's, I know innovation needs to spread across companies, but you need the instigators, you need the catalysts, you need the leaders. And I suspect that many of the people, if not all the people in this room, are people who want that role. You know, so actually, you don't need that many of you, I think, to start to instigate change. You just sort of keep the two pizza rule. Um, if, if the sort of teams are any larger than that, I don't think it works. I think we see that time and time again. It's not bigger is better anymore. It just takes you standing up and following that dream. So uh, last, I kind of return to where I started the day. D again, just a quick quiz. Anyone know what this is? Sla the Tesla. Thank you, Max. This is the, uh, the chipboard on the Tesla that is currently orbiting something somewhere right now. Made on Earth by humans, if you can't read it. Um, now, you know, you've all been here at the start of something, I think, exciting, I hope. Um, we've had some great highs. We've had the odd hiccup uh, along the way, um, but that's innovation. And you've all been pioneers in your own way. So um, it, it's been great being here with you. And um, I think, you know, a huge thank you to Max and Martin. Martina and Max, Max and Martina, um, m and uh, and for all the hard work that they've put in to making this run so well, so smoothly, and uh, yeah, can we give them a round of applause? <laughs> and, and finally, the, uh, I'd like us to say, you know, actually this is a special group. Um, I hope you've made some interesting connections. Um, I would urge you all to stay close. You know, um, we did a little exercise for those who weren't in the room where we were sharing some of the problems. I'm sure you saw similar issues come up again and again. Um, and most importantly, perhaps let's all stay human. Um, let's remember that, you know, we have our special, creative, individual perspectives, and we should celebrate what it is that we are best at. Um, not necessarily worry about what we're not great at.